What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Kind of Funny Podcast, your glycerine podcast from Bush. Andy, let me hear it. Don't let those days go by. And imagine just rain falling. Yeah, down. And, he's and you're wondering, right. is he going to get electrocuted because of the guitar? What are, are the like, electronics no. involved here? This cannot be safe. Are we about to watch Gwen Stefani's husband die? That goes right now, man. You know what I mean? But it, it, it was that thing. He was so Don't pure. Blake Gavin Rossdale was so pure. The electricity couldn't touch him. Much I mean, like in Ernest Goes to Camp, where the Andy, air, the warrior was so fierce, the arrows could not touch him. <laughs> Mike Drucker knows what I'm saying. He I remembers do. Ernest Goes to Camp. I do. Uh, I love the Ernest movies. I don't. I mean, the man died. I almost said we don't have enough of them, but he, <laughs> he died. Was enough. He did what he could. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you really got to blame Jim Varney for dying. These two. <laughs> <laughs> That's really what killed it that series could have been something if he hadn't been so selfish as the it's time away. we rebooted it we gotta yeah. reboot Ernest. we've got to be right around the corner from it mike you've oh, got I'm your sure. you've got your finger on the pulse of hollywood i feel like <laughs> any any second now there's some yeah. comedian who could come out and be the oh, new Ernest. sure who's, who sure are we going to cast as Ernest right now in this in the Ernest movie the new Ernest movie yeah who that's a good that, question that because job? we really need to think about modern times we need to think about like the the what would be the Ernest sensibilities in 2021 now, i'm gonna like, throw this where, out there. All, but i think we need to start from the locations he would go and then work back definitely like that, back to like camp he's going back to camp he's going back to prison he's going back to that those are the only two i remember I, so help me out here help me out mike Drucker. Ernest goes to camp. Christmas. Yeah. Ernest goes to Christmas. Space. <laughs> yeah. Did he go to space? Oh yeah. I remember the. Did he go the to space? No. You know what? I'm not thinking. Of, I'm thinking of Rocket Man. <laughs> the movie Rocket Man. This like the poster of it. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I, I mean, I remember Rocket Man. I don't. I don't. The po- the, the poster for some reason I always thought it was a. Uh, looks like Iron Man. Ernest. Looks like an old Iron Man comic book. Yeah. The only scene I remember from Rocket Man. It, that's with Harlan Williams, right? Yes. Is where he farts in the spacesuit and it goes through a tube to another spacesuit. Mm-hmm. It's the only thing I remember. <laughs> it's just a fart joke it's in a spacesuit. Yeah. Oh, I'm not thinking about that movie. What am I? Oh, I'm thinking Rocketeer. Uh, I was thinking Rocketeer God, too, Andy. but I was, I was thinking Rocket. God I was thinking Rocket Man, the Elton Andy. John biopic, and then I was I, thinking Rocketeer, and then I was like, "How much you love the soundtrack from Rocketeer?" That's how none of us have it. seen the same movies. None that's, of us have seen the same. Movies. <laughs> that's why I said it looks like an old. Uh, it looks like an old Iron Man comic book. The uh, the the Rocketeer poster. That's what it reminds me of. The right, Kevin has brought up uh, the Ernest Goes to Camp uh, collection here. Oh, great. Ernest saves Christmas, of course. Ernest you think we're getting, getting a, stupid. Greg, you think you're getting a 4K UHD remaster of this? I hope so. I Color hope so. graded all correctly. I think that's the biggest thing, uh, uh, Kevin. I sent to assets just a photo of Ernest. Toss that up there because I want that. On, I want that on the forefront of our mind. All right. I want us to look at Jim Varney here and think about Ernest and think about like who in 2021 could play this man. Who? I'm, gonna th- I'm throwing this out there as a okay. thought starter. Thought I'm starter, sorry. Like go ahead. By can, the go. way. By the way, Tim, we have uh, who should play Ernest in the Ernest reboot. <laughs> that's that's the headline. You with Mike Trucker. All right, you put that in there. All right. Yeah. Uh, you look right, at we'll this man right here. Do. You look <laughs> at this Jim Varney. And hey, we'll see if that actually ends up being the th- headline in the thumbnail. I'll tell you who I'm gonna go with. Thank you. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm gonna throw out a suggestion who can play Jim Varney, and it's gonna be one that the hardest of hardcore. Ernest fans will revolt against. I'll say no. Sure, Are sure. you kidding me? Just similar to Heath Ledger and the Joker. They there uh-huh. will be outcries in the street. People will be angry. I'm gonna go with this is a weird one. I don't know why I just thought of this. Justice Smith from the Pokemon movie. Huh. I, okay. I feel what like fuck, Andy. I feel like he's gonna pop Dude, up on Andy, screen and we're all gonna I get go. It. Wow, this guy I didn't I didn't know this guy had it in him. Good right. For him. Right. Yeah. Right. What you, you don't I'm think the comedic chops necessarily? Yeah, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna throw out probably what I would say is just a much better suggestion, oh, uh, okay. given that this person has comedic chops, and we were just talking about him on John Wick and being very underutilized in the entire franchise. I'm gonna Jason throw out Jason Matsukas because oh I think he would be amazing as Ernest. Sure. Come on, Kristen yeah. Wiig. Yeah, our first woman Ernest. Ernest. We're ready for it. We're ready yeah. for the first woman Ernest. It's like I feel like that's. Fun. I feel like that's. <laughs> <laughs> insulting to women everywhere. <laughs> women like, are like, back we by don't about want this. Years. No, we don't yeah, need, like, we don't need this. We don't need this. We don't this. We don't want I mean, this. This to is be terrible. clear, though, I think that's in line with it, though. Like, do people want the Ernest movies? No, like, we took them and we we took them happily. But, like, no. that's not what anyone was, like, looking for, clamoring for. I'll give them credit. Like, were they the first cinematic universe? Like, that's pretty damn cool. That it's, like, you know, a bunch I of don't... movies that aren't titled, like, two, three, four. It's, like, no, yeah. it's just in this universe. Right. But I'm going to throw out the obvious choice that, again, 
it, he's so perfect for this because it's we don't want it, but it would be right, and it's Kevin Hart. Oh, oh yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's that's like a little too obvious, Tim, but it's kind yeah. of perfect. Yeah. yeah. But, but, but here's here's the problem though. Here's the problem because he's got such a big rivalry with another huge star. There's no way you're keeping the Rock out of this now. So if if Kevin Hart goes up for the role, you know the Rock has. He can't take that hit to his ego. He's got to be earnest. Well, you now. see, here's the thing. I have a way to solve all of this right there. All right, is you get Kevin Hart, you cast him as the new Ernest, right? And then, as we all remember, of course, we remember the Ernest movies. He's always talking to Vern. Hey Vern. Hey Vern. Hey, and Vern was never on camera, right? At the very end, like the mid credit scene is Hey Vern, and they fling the camera around, and it's the Rock, and he's just sitting there all pissed off at Kevin Hart, aka Ernest. And it's a whole cinematic universe where a year later. It's Vern and his perspective through the whole movie, and it's sure. like an action well, film where you he know, has I to bet, go to a video game. I like where your head's at, but as you know, where can we? How can we get this into the streaming ecosystem? Can we have the Ver, Vern perspective be an HBO Max series? Would you? Are you open to that, Nick? I'm 100 percent open to that. And you, as you know, The Rock has a, a YouTube channel through, I believe, Seven Bucks Productions or whatever his production company is called. So Seven I'm pretty Bucks. sure he could he could make that happen immediately. And also HBO Max uh, hurting for content. So I'm sure they'd take any pitches right now. I Are think they? this would be great. It's yeah. Our DCEU slate coming next year. Just going back to the well. It. Just going back Four to the well every single time. Oh, another it. Batman you know I mean? movie. Let's make another Batman movie. So, Nick, your argument for that is let's get a Ernest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm it's saying, man. Doesn't have enough, but yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. No one talked about the quality of it, right? We just oh, need yeah. more HBO Max yeah. qual- content. Mm-hmm. Listen, if they can bring back and legitimately make me cry watching Cobra Kai, I I think you could do something awesome with Ernest. But I mean, I'll also say this, Tim. <laughs> back in the day, I don't ever. I can't remember a single Ernest goes to whatever movie, and I distinctly remember watching them, even when I was a kid. Going, these are just objectively terrible films. I don't like this. I don't like this character. I don't want any of this, but my parents, of course, being a child of the eighties, the TV was my babysitter. So whatever was on was just what I had to watch. Yeah. yeah. I have I, the perfect idea. Go for it. I have the perfect idea. Um, similar to the movie that was made about uh, Bob Dylan, I'm not here, but it's a bunch of different actors all playing Ernest in different times of his life. And so it's sort of like a, a, a docudrama sort of thing. We see maybe young Ernest, and as they get older, I'm thinking like Ernie. again, Justice Smith, Ernie Leslie Jones. Um, what what'd you say? He went by Ernie then. Oh, he's Ernie's young. a kid. That's yeah. right. I'm thinking yeah. Justice Smith. I'm thinking Leslie Jones. I'm thinking Kristen Wiig. I'm thinking Kevin Hart. We can have all sorts of different people in Hollywood playing Ernest at different points in his life. Maybe it's a six part series, two hours long, each episode. Right now on Twitter.com slash Game Over Greggy, the preeminent Twitter for all earnest things, I have said, do you want an earnest reboot? Right now, no is winning. (laughs) 47% of the vote. Uh, 18% yes, and then 34% show me the results. But here is where I want, all right? We're sitting here. We're waiting for the mail-in Andy, Andy over here. Shocking. You know what I mean? I want to give you the 2021 <laughs> taste you could have of Ernest, all right? Because yeah, yeah. uh, Chef Boy RD here responds, Ernest defeats COVID. Now, that's an, oh. I would sign up for that one. And then Corey Barlog says, Ernest saves democracy. See, we that's do, what I'm saying. We could use We're Ernest. We're not sending right him now. back to jail. We're not sending him back to camp. We need a man's man's Ernest. We need Honestly, somebody to come here and get some Who could be a done. lady? <laughs> I feel like yeah. Ernest saves democracy get it done. with just Forrest Gump. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's very that's true. So true. Uh, very Tom true. Hanks, very true. <laughs> Tom oh, Hanks yeah, is yeah. artist. Mm-hmm. Uh, you weren't on this stream uh, uh, with us. Andy was maybe at this point, but nobody else on the stream was uh, yesterday when we were uh, playing over on uh, Twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. I got to uh, break some news over there. I had watched uh, News of the World, the new Tom Hanks flick. Right, like Tom it. Hanks still alive. He, he immediately survived. went. <laughs> I contacted Tom Hanks's people, and I said, "Hey, I watched News of the World. I would love to have Tom Hanks on the Kind of Funny podcast. Let me know what you need. We're streaming yesterday. Email pops. Ba-dunk. It's about the Tom Hanks thing. I click on it, and it was a very nice rejection letter. But we got in front of him for a second. You know what I mean? Somebody connected to Tom Hanks understands Great. there's a podcast going on over here. Nick Hold Scarpino, kind of funny.com. Can you tell them, perhaps this would happen the follow up email? Could you tell them that the other day, um, <laughs> Should I just call Gump, you will regret this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you motherfuckers. <laughs> uh, no, I was going to say, tell them that um, I, I watched Forrest Gump the other day because apparently AMC is playing like all these uh, amazing Tom Hanks movies. Sure, I also sure. watched Apollo 13, fantastic as well. Forrest Gump, one of those movies. 
you can't start watching unless you watch the whole thing. It just, you start and it doesn't matter where it's at. It was the part where he was talking about Bubba Gum Shrimp and there's sure. that asshole that's sitting on the bench and he's like, boy, you trying to tell me you're the one who started Bubba Gum Shrimp. Now I've seen next everything. To a millionaire this whole time. And then, and then Forrest <laughs> Gump just happens to have his picture from like Time Magazine with yeah. him or whatever it was. It was so Andy, good. Andy, what man. do you guys say about Forrest Gump? What are the hot RGV takes on Forrest Gump? Can you also tell the press reps that a week before quarantine started, before we knew really how severe everything was going to be, uh, Nick said, "Do you want? Do you think Tim Hank or Tom Hanks told his wife Hanks for nothing?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all the time. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. that was something Nick said. Oh, God. <laughs> Mike Drucker, classic. welcome to the kind of funny podcast. It's been Thank too you. long, sir. It has. It has. How are you, how are you guys doing? <laughs> We're this good. well, we, Mike, <laughs> Mike, we've done well to the point that Greg emailed Tom Hanks' people, whatever yeah, that yeah. means, and yeah. he'll take it as a win that Tom they Hanks' respond. people know, so right. we need to have a podcast. Like, you guys that's, also have, that's the victory we're taking here. <laughs> you guys also have like three years of inside jokes that I have I have missed by not paying attention. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. There that's, was, that's, who was it? Andy, you were talking about the other day where someone was like, hey, I, like, I watch every single piece of, uh, of K- KF content and I still don't understand any of the inside jokes. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. It's, it's better uh, that way. It's I'm on the way. content and I, I don't understand it. Uh, it, it. Speaking of like ongoing kind of funny things that have happened or not happened that have now officially happened, many, many moons ago in this quarantine, I ordered something online. Oh, and oh my God, I didn't think weird. I was actually going to get it. Okay, here. Oh but it finally God. arrived. The nugget. The chicken nugget body pillow. Oh, from Travis God. Scott. Oh, my goodness. How it much does that cost? So much. It's cost me about 80 bucks. Okay. It's it's going on eBay right now for over $500. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> wow. You have a people... movie theater behind you. Do you need the money? Like, yeah, that, like <laughs> you no, literally no. have a movie theater at home. I ain't selling this. I ain't selling it at all. This is this thing is gonna make us famous. Gia at, at her this job right now has a, a show and tell thing they're doing because I guess we're we're all adults here. She needs she's taking the nugget from me right now. This thing's making the rounds. It's gonna make us rich and famous all at once. I love <laughs> it. I Nick, love it. Nick, now they're only going for five hundred dollars on eBay. What are you thinking? We go in for about need, three. Get a little Andy, six pack. I think we need. I think we need three nuggies for <laughs> sure. I think at least fifteen hundred with tax and, and fees and all that stuff. <laughs> it's very I, large. Uh, uh, before we get any further off track, that's how well it's going for us, Mike. <laughs> how well is it going for you? I heard you just wrote a book. <laughs> I did. I wrote. I wrote a book. Everybody. I don't know if you can see this or not, but it's silent. It. It's a book about Silent Hill Two for Boss Fight Books. It's there you game. go. It is a great game. Uh, yeah, I I know the guy. I met Gabe, who runs the publishing house, and I he was like, "Do you ever want to pitch one?" And I pitched Parappa the Rapper, and he said no. And so <laughs> then I said Silent Hill Two, and he said yes. So, so that's, that's what we can sell. That's interesting <laughs> for me because I was thinking about this today in the shower, as I often do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was thinking about. I was like, Mike Drucker wrote a book, wrote one of the boss key books. Like that's awesome. Silent Hill 2. Like, out of all games, that's not one I would have paid you for. Perhaps the rap makes a lot more sense. Yeah. But I need to ask, why Silent Hill 2? Um, it came, like, sort of my senior year of college. So I think I was going through a lot at the time. And it's also, like, I think the first kind of horror game that I played that felt, I don't know, it felt like the story was mature. Again, I was 18 when I first played it, so a lot of things felt mature. But, like, it felt like a very small personal story. And it came out at the same time as like Metal Gear Solid 2, which had this giant international conspiracy story. So for me, that Silent <laughs> Hill, like really personal, sad story really hit home for me. So I think a lot of people, you know, obviously in our industry, you hear about boss fight books all the time. A whole bunch of different ones have been. Mm-hmm. I have a, a smattering of them around here. Of course, I'll pick yours up. Thank for you. people who don't know, what are these books? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Are they just personal essays? Are you trying to, are you interviewing people? What did you do with yours? Um, mine, well, they're basically, uh, if, if you haven't heard of boss fight books, you probably heard of 33 and a third, which are those small books about individual albums, music albums. This is basically that for video games where they have different authors write their own analysis of it. And some people write very personal stories about how the game affected their life. Uh, some people write very literary analyses of it. Some people do the history. Mine's probably like half history one third or one half like maybe half history half analysis just a little bit of personal stuff to contextualize um but i didn't i spent more time sort of analyzing it i used my master's degree so wow. that's nice yeah yeah Holy shit. yeah 
Someone oh, that's did. That's crazy. You might be the first person in history. That's really cool. <laughs> For uh, $40,000. Definitely $40,000, baby. And I see I see they're charging four ninety five for these books. So yes. we don't need to sell too much to make it up. So Just everyone 10, get on 000. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I need everyone to buy a copy because I'm going to die if I don't. <laughs> <laughs> the stakes are high for this. The stakes one. are really <laughs> high. I owe a lot of bad people money. <laughs> well yeah you're still out in new york right i mean here it's it's loaded with bad people that's what it's i know loaded. about new york you know ninja turtles ghosts and bad people out there <laughs> you don't know like how many like like the the greatest pleasure of new york is still like like when you're walking late at night and you're like big apple 3 a.m it's like the <laughs> best feeling <laughs> remember in turtles in time it just oh, feels oh, yeah. it's so beautiful that's right that's awesome i'm 36 i envy you <laughs> 36 uh, Mike, if somebody somehow doesn't know you, if they're a new kind of funny person, they've stumbled into us in 2020 like a lot of people did. Now they've stuck around for 2021. Uh, who are you, Mike Drucker? I am a uh, comedian and comedy writer. Uh, I currently am the co-head writer and co-executive producer of Full Frontal with Samantha B. And I met Greg because I worked at IGN writing funny videos for him. That's right. Um, you did the up at noon. That was such an easy job. <laughs> <laughs> so easy so easy that in your little blurb on the the about your book like IGN is not even close to being mentioned like you have no. so many different accolades oh, no, yeah. so many different things you've done yeah i love now that. mike was it easy because there was zero expectation of success for any of the shows that you were writing on at IGN i think well first of all you the production team had to do a lot of hard work and mm. i didn't so that was already a success i think um <laughs> Also, do you remember the guy, what was his name, Grant? Oh, the yeah. Guy who, like, ran it? Never forget mm -hmm. Grant. Hollywood I think Grant. Hollywood Grant. I ran into him a few years ago at, oh, no shit. at a WGA awesome. meeting, and he writes Hallmark movies now. Oh, oh that's There awesome. is no better fitting end to this story than yeah. Grant Thompson writing Lifetime movies in 2021. I love right. that. Hell yeah. yeah. Live your uh, best life. But I think, like, after he sort of, like, was like, I don't know what we're doing and just ghosted us, I was like, oh, we'll just have fun with it. Yes. There was that wonderful moment where like the bottom dropped out and the, the clock started ticking when we could just do anything. And yeah. that was that was <laughs> such a beautiful six month period. And then yeah. I, I'll never forget, Drucker was like, hey, guys, um, so I'm leaving. And me and Greg were both like, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, right. you're too, we're like, too yeah, talented. Yeah, where are you going now? You're like, I'm going to go to the Jimmy Fallon. I'm like, God yeah. damn it. Yeah. Yeah. Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> Fucking yeah. hell. That was I've always been thing. interested in that portion of it, Mike, where, like, how do you you, 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 want, you don't want to know more about the IGN stuff? You want to hear more <laughs> up in news stories? Oh no no no, no! I'm talking about the I'm talking about the IG and stuff. I thought I thought oh, yeah. you were digging a dig at us. You're like, yeah, I've always been no. way more interested in the Jimmy Fallon part. <laughs> the Jimmy Fallon stuff. No no no, because I I guess with you know with these fucking hooligans working at IGN, I've always seen it as you know the the first version of kind of funny, right? Where it's just people just figuring it out along the way, and I don't. I know that you wrote there, but I don't even know what the structure of that looks like. What was their structure? How do you? Yeah. What do you plan? I, I don't. I didn't. I, it just always felt like it was kind of very fly by night. <laughs> it, it was very fly by night still. Uh, but we we like wrote like mon we wrote a whole monologue. We would write sketches and and shoot them. There was like a fair amount of prep work. It wasn't like terrible. It was fun to do. We just a bunch of us sat in a room and made jokes. But it was actually a fair amount of prep work. Uh, crazily enough. Although, again, the production team had to suffer through that. We were just like, I don't know, we want to shoot on the roof. And then they would go do that. Nice. <laughs> I have a joke about the roof. <laughs> I have a joke about the oh, roof. We're gonna get them up there. Get yeah, we had like also we had like no budget so whatever mike would write had to had to revolve around a parking structure a roof or an elevator yep. and oh, then yeah. the elevator like six months in pablo was like you guys please stop using the elevator because people would try to get in and it would just be greg shirtless with like yeah, brian yeah. altano wearing right, sunglasses and me with the that. camera it's like, like the, what are you guys like, filming in here like the espn commercials those are the best. Oh, yeah. yeah that oh, was yeah. it yeah, That's oh, yeah. Going for a long yeah. time to survive yeah, yeah, yeah it was yeah, that was so fun though it was good for the writer stuff and i remember like you know we had that contract with youtube for that first year and i remember it was it, for somebody who had been at ign for as long as i had at that time and seen so many different ideas fail and so many different projects be shoestring i'll never forget when 
everybody was so in on start and then when we would do those meetings mike and it would be the table read and it would be 15 fucking people in the room yeah. you would outsource jokes from like seven different comedians across the country i would read four different versions of a joke till we found the right one and everybody's laughing great i ran it i have a photo of it from when that guy was following me around documenting my cancer and like there, there's this great shot of everyone in the room reacting to it and then you juxtapose that to the final I mean, the, after I, the money was gone and you left and everything, Death the rose. final run of Up at Noon, where it'd be me and Brian and they're at a whiteboard, Nick would come in with an apple halfway through and be like, you guys got this show? <laughs> we're like, yeah. He's like, all right, we'll just leave. <laughs> because at that point, at that point, it had become apparent that we were just, the show was what it was going to be. And it had kind of like, right. you know, it was like it was running its course and we needed to kind of figure out what it's was, like, was going like well with it. It's like when Mike left, the teacher left and the class didn't really know how to handle it. And they're like, yeah, it's going to be fun. And then like three weeks in, they're like, oh, we actually, uh, this is, we're kind of worried <laughs> we don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah well I mean, the, the other side of it was ign was like for the first time because of the youtube start money just like we're gonna hire someone to be funny and to yeah. write funny things and it's like holy shit like that is so far beyond anything ign's ever done before totally. it's like we're doing something outside of just sitting there and talking about a video game like what what that's crazy and then yeah then once he left and the budget left and all that it was just like well what should we do i don't know let's sit around ranking things it's like cool here we are <laughs> oh, no, I'll, never, I'll never forget when, when, when mike left it was like i'm going to, i got an offer from jimmy fallon i think our counter offer to you was we'll pay you exactly the same but we'll give you more flaming hot cheetos or like cheez-its whatever <laughs> thing. i just slid a box of tabasco cheez-its across the desk I'm like eh? and you're like no <laughs> dude i'm going to new york Fuck off. nope, nope. <laughs> wait I I remember, yeah, when we hired Mike, I remember the interview. Him and I were in one of those little conference rooms for about 10 minutes talking about games. And I was like, all right, yeah, you're cool, but I have you for another 15 minutes. Do you want to go eat waffles? And yeah. you're like, yeah. And like Nick's sure. was making waffles. We just walked over and ate waffles at my desk. Was it like December 23rd or Christmas Eve even? It was right before it was Christmas. something ridiculous like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah 100%. Yeah. And you, you you had come from Nintendo, right? That I was at Nintendo. Prior. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was like, um, that's so cool. Yeah. It was, it, it was just it, one of the, it, no, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no, it's it's I loved working at Nintendo. I, I think what made me eventually leave was it's just, you know, when you're localizing, it's a very creative job to localize, but it's still someone else's work you're localizing. Mm -hmm. And I kind sure, of wanted sure. to do my own thing. Well, it was, I just remember being super impressed because you were the first real writer that had sort of come <laughs> into our environment. No, I mean, like comedy writer, right? Like obviously right. Greg and the guys like, you know, Greg. Oh, I, no, I don't I don't know what takes offense right. at that. I think everyone knows exactly what you mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, but so like, you know, the, the job path for IGN had been prior to that, like, you know, you either got a journalism degree and then started writing for smaller places and then worked way up to IGN. You were the first person who I was like, wait a minute, you're like a gun for hire. And, and it was so cool to see you go from – Nintendo and you, I, th I think, if I remember correctly, had written like for The Onion and stuff like that too, or no? I written for The Onion, Freelance yeah. for SNL. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. And then you work, yeah, you, you had that history of SNL working under Seth Meyers. And I was like, what the fuck? This is a thing. Like prior to this, I'm like, I've only read about people like you. This is yeah. so cool. <laughs> and then you came in and then I was like, well, clearly this guy is going to like, like this guy's going to elevate all of us. And you quickly were like, this has been great, guys. I had a great time. I'll see you later. And then peace out to a to real go. show. And it was great. <laughs> and then I started watching Jimmy Fallon again. I was like, oh, cool. Oh, Good yeah, for you. Yeah. Good for you. <laughs> Yeah, there was that. I remember uh, uh, we started watching uh, uh, Ted Lasso uh, yeah. the other day, and when we were watching, I was uh, watching, it and Jason Stick is up there, and I was like, "Why do I remember him?" Some, and I'm like, "I'm like, oh yeah, when Dr uh, when Drucker." worked on the espies he ran into him backstage in jason sudeik and it was like all yeah. this stuff about how he liked ign and like remembered uncharted my uncharted review and something weird like that i was like that's a weird callback in the middle of his apple tv plus show jason's a, jason plays jason sudeikis plays video games and he knows them very well and he yeah cool. he was familiar with ign which was great does all that feel like i you know i, I had clements on uh for the first time in a podcast for the first time like 10 years a couple of weeks ago on we have cool friends and talking to him and like recapping these stories that we haven't talked about in forever does all that feel like a, another lifetime to you um it doesn't you know it doesn't it doesn't um it does in some ways in terms of like where my life is in general um i uh, but I, I think it, it weirdly, like, it's almost like for me, the modern portion of my life is Nintendo on. It's almost like mm, Nintendo mm. was when I started to figure out who I was and who I, what I wanted to be with my career. And then I think that flowed into IGN. So I kind of feel like IGN is part of my modern era of my life. Hmm. Okay, uh, okay. But it's like, 
phase two. I, I feel like once we hit 10 years ago, that's when, because right now it's nine years ago that I work there. Once we hit 10, mm -hmm. I'll probably be like, fuck it. <laughs> Forget all those memories and those people. You'll never text Brian again. It's over. Never, never. With, with with everyone else here at the at the, the, the table, this table, uh, do you guys? How would you categorize your lives in terms of careers and stuff? Like, do you see Greg and Nick? Do you see IGN as separate from kind of funny or as part of the same thing? Andy, kind of funny Rooster Teeth. How's that work for you? Uh, man, I see IGN was the start of my professional career for sure. Prior to that, I was shooting wedding videos and serving food and just trying to get anything started in my life. And so the idea that I could come and be at a place that had resources, that had that wanted to build the team, that wanted to like be competitive in a marketplace and like create and kind of pioneer in a lot of ways, like streaming online video for video games, um, uh, that's for sure an opportunity that I would that I jumped at. And like I learned pretty much. I would say 80% of my technical skills through IGN and through the opportunities that I got there. So like, yeah, for sure. And also I grew up there. Like I got the job when I was 25. I was dumb. I was like, I don't know. I don't know what a 401k is. Someone had to explain that to me when I was like sitting down. I was like, is that, a, they're like, we also have 401k. I was like, is Still that don't know. a good thing? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and, yeah, and, like, and you, you said that and whoever, Fran's interviewing you and goes, do you think it is? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So yeah, I mean, when, when, when me I got there, I just, I just remember being like, wow, I've like, this is a different step in my life for sure. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure Greg, I don't know if Greg feels the same way. Oh yeah. I mean, for me, I would say like, if I think if I was going to break up my life, I like, cause I like the, you know, Drucker's use of modern, right. And like golden age, silver age. Yeah. Like, I think Chicago is, a ch is a chunk. Columbia is a chunk, which includes Mizzou and then working there. Then it's IG and then it's kind of funny. Cause it is, longer we've done kind of funny the more it's become this push and pull of it feels like just yesterday we were in this the spare bedroom and that also when when i talk to clements about things right and we're he's bringing up jokes that i'd forgotten about or vice versa yeah, like yeah i it was so long ago let alone the fact of like you think about it now and it's like mind-boggling that there is no ign office on second street and even if there was how many people do i actually know in there outside of like you know right Hair damon like you know in terms of like how it used to be where i was you know coming home it's like high school or whatever yeah andy yeah. what about you um i think moving to austin was like the big definitive split where i i was 19 and that was i was like all right i'm gonna make a change i'm not gonna stay here in south texas and probably just you know i don't know but whatever happens to everybody else who lives back home like i just didn't want to do that and you all wanted to like get into some sort of creative field. So I think moving to Austin was kind of like the 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 big kind of like paragraph line break uh, in, in my life. And I still feel like I'm in that phase because I moved to Austin. Then that just naturally led into art and game development. And then that led into being in game dev for three years. And that led into Rooster, well, kind of funny, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird for me because, I mean, obviously I'm similar to, to Greg and Nick in the way that like IGN definitely is where I learned everything and that was such an amazing place for me and like I wouldn't be here without that, obviously. But what's funny to it is now I look back on IGN the same way I look back on school as opposed to looking at it as like a, mm -hmm. like a big chapter of my life or it is a chapter of my life but it is a closed chapter. It's not part of this chapter that we're currently in Like, because mm -hmm. I went from high school, you know, you go elementary school, middle school, high school, college. IGN felt like, you know, middle school for me was three years, college or high school was four, college was four, IGN was five. Right. Yeah. And it's yeah. just kind of like, cool, that's just that. And then now I imagine that this kind of funny thing is going to be, I'm in my last chapter when it comes to that you type of stuff, better, you know? Man. Yeah. Right. But Did I mean, you, like, you, it very much leave like us, IGN you feels, leave us for Jimmy I'll Fallon, you, I swear I, to God, Tim, I, fucking murder IGN you. feels so, so, so far away. Like, it's, yeah. It's I struggle to like when I think about my friends at IGN, my times at IGN, it feels like I'm thinking about college or like even before then. It's well, it's weird too because like my relationship, I, I worked obviously so closely with Fran for nine years that I was at IGN, and I'm our sorry. relationship was so drastically different than it is now. Like now, I, I, let me put it this way: if you told me that ten years ago that Fran was going to text me at ten o'clock at night, I would have anxiety about that and probably stay up all night. But now I look forward to it because we're going to play games together and hang out and like shoot the shit, and it's totally different. But yeah, it does. That is a defined moment in my life, and it does. It does feel like a long time ago. So yeah, I guess if you're going to break it up, I mean, I spent nine years there, so that's almost a decade of my life right there. So that's those are the IGN years for sure, and then kind of funny. But is it weird, Tim, that we might be creating those memories for some of the newer guys that come that came in to kind of no. funny? Like they're going to think Roger go, or Blessing ever leave, I'll kill them too. You know what I mean? Yeah, 
Murder. Wow. So murder, Andy? murder time. <laughs> you you got in before the murder policies, but I just want oh. you to know. <laughs> yeah, I didn't I'll just it. hurt yeah, you. I'll hurt it you was, real bad. <laughs> this it, wasn't the con- I can get it. it wasn't on the contract that wasn't written out, actually. You, you mean the, <laughs> the, the one sentence the one sentence email that one of us sent you before you drove across the country? Yeah. yeah. Um, I was gonna mention what I would like for um what I would like for the listeners and maybe viewers of this. Clip out to where I was answering the question, Tim's question. Very out of breath. I've been pedaling under the desk. <laughs> I didn't. I, I have a little, um, uh, right. Drucker. I have a little bi- uh, bike pedal system underneath my desk, and I was pedaling the whole time. One of those. And when the question came uh, from Tim, I didn't expect to be like that out of breath. You're gassed. <laughs> completely gassed from pedaling. <laughs> Dude, I was on a, I was on a, 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 like a business call today with like some important people. But like, if I'm gonna be honest, <laughs> not that important. Damn. Like some of, some of them were double like, A. They're double was, A important. There was one guy that was like, he's clearly with the important people. But I don't know that this guy was important enough to be eating his lunch on the call while on a treadmill. <laughs> what? Oh, sick. No. while no. clearly doing some other work and. No engaging no. every once in a while and it's one of those things where it's like look we we do podcast we drink we eat we go to the bathroom we do whatever the fuck we want live yeah, in front of your eyes you know Tim, what i mean sometimes mr. all at once that's mr nintendo you're talking shit about good luck getting your zelda game <laughs> in the future okay <laughs> i was luck. just shocked where i was like all right this is like i hey, I'm, i ain't trying to hate but like it got in the way of the conversation and like it got in the way of like what we were trying to accomplish and i was just like this is this is definitely a first for me you gotta <laughs> have like, you gotta turn really your think, camera off. That, that, dude, that, that dude's very listening. He's unsubscribing on Patreon right now. He's just like, oh, I can't believe this. <laughs> you just well, walked what, away what from the eating? MeUndies empire, Tim Geddes. <laughs> Good Tim, question, what Kevin. Eating? What was he eating? Like a burrito? Hoagie? Salad. Uh, no, I don't, it wasn't a salad. I, I don't know what it was, but I mean, it was That's not probably. something that he should be eating on camera. Like it, but, it was okay, like not so just like a quick or on a treadmill or on a the, treadmill. The, the, the call, the call was like forty five minutes. Like it was a long time. And like, hey, credit to him, never stop walking. Like, Kevin, he, you I, know, he got his steps in. I, okay, because I'm picturing the dude jogging with a headband with a fucking like muscle t shirt on, <laughs> eating like fucking rice, and it's just like flopping all over the place. Like it's a mess, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't quite that. I was What's imagining okay? he was eating like I don't know ramen. You yeah, know, geez. clear yeah. bowl, just fucking, but like, no, 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 but nailing it. You know, his body's moving, his hands and oh, head fuck. holding perfectly still. Whoa, he's holding perfectly he's got the still. Nick Scar- he's got the Nick Scarpino skill of the marching band where you're like, you're just. You're, you're, Glide, you're, you're, the, Andy, we call it the glide step. Thank you very oh much. Oh, my God. Trucker, for you, move. you know, we're talking, there's these defined things for us. And you're talking about yours is like the modern era starting yeah. with Nintendo. How does that go then to being a big time rider out there in New York, right? Because you've bounced around through a whole bunch of different stuff. I have. Uh, I think because it's sort of like, you know, I have that, I think in my life I try to use all the parts of the Buffalo, so I consider everything helpful for the career moving forward. Like there's yeah. no like left behind stuff. And uh, I think with Nintendo, that was the first time I was just a writer. I mm-hmm. was just there for words. I wasn't like an assistant who got to pitch jokes. I wasn't a freelancer. I wasn't someone who like, you know, got hired for two nights at an award show. I was a full-time writer. So that feels almost for me like the moment that I was like, oh, I've become myself. Um, so that's why it all it all flows into it. And also like each of the environments was creative. Like what I did at IGN with Up at Noon wasn't that different than what I did at Fallon. It was more intense and I had to do it faster and more often, but the skill set was the same. Mm-hmm. So uh, for me, it all like flows together. Also, I think that like I haven't stayed anywhere as long as you guys have. So maybe for me, there's a little more fluidity to like where the eras, where the demarcation mm. points are. Because I was at IGN for one year. So yeah. if you oh, were at it for weird. nine or five or however long, I feel like that's going to be like a bigger, like this was a chunk of my life. Not like this was a part of this part of my life. Sure. Sure. That makes a lot of sense. That makes Drucker, sense. When I think of when I think of like uh, writing in the industry, um, my mind automatically goes to that short like 45 minute hour thing that south park did where it was seven days to air or eight i forgot what the i still gotta watch that yeah um where bill Hader's there along with matt and trey and and they're all in the room and a couple other writers there as well but i just always think of bill Hader because i didn't even know he wrote for south park but i think of them all in this room kind of cramming jokes how stressful does that you know process get what like 
Were were you having to turn around stuff in twenty four hours? Well, obviously it's the Tonight Show, obviously. But <laughs> yeah. like, like, I'll get that to you like, tomorrow, boss. No, the show what, is in yeah, four hours. Is, <laughs> what, was the, what was the cutoff point? You know what I mean? Like, what, if you know the show airs at you know you would record at what noon or something like that? Or five, we record Tonight Show record at four or five. Okay, yeah. so what was the cutoff for the jokes? Is like, did, if something huge happened at two p.m., was that like ah uh, we probably shouldn't include it? It's not fully fleshed out. It depends. Now, if it's something that's like a giant, like if there's like a tragedy or a shooting or something, we'd usually, uh, we wouldn't add, we'd just have him shoot something beforehand and be like, hey, the rest of the show was shot before this happened. We just wanted to let you know, we're sorry. Um, uh, otherwise, it was the moment that he was out of that curtain telling the jokes was when we could not update that. Oh. Like there was times like maybe 10 or 15 minutes before he'd go out on stage that something would happen and we'd have to run out and give him the update. Sam, uh, Sam B is a little different because it's once a week. So we have a lot more time to process things and make things and put things together. And, uh, you know, Sam is, Sam is a little less of a celebrity than Jimmy Fallon is to put it a certain way. So like, so it's easier to just be like, Hey, we need a change. Can we go back? And she'll be like, yeah, sure. We can go back. Whereas Jimmy, once he's shot something, he's shot something and he's done. For, when it comes so to writing diva. these these type of shows, <laughs> yeah. I, I've always been interested in, in late night shows, whether they're weekly yeah. or, or nightly of like what is written, what is not and what is kind of 50 50, because obviously the monologue stuff that's yeah. written, the sketches, written. those are written when he has a celebrity, they're sitting doing the interview on the couch. I, so often it feels written or it at least feels written enough. Is it? It's. It depends on the celebrity, to be honest. Um, sub celebrities will go in, especially like comedians. Often will be paneling their material, uh, which is so sometimes like you can really tell when they're just doing stand up on the couch. Um, I hate that, by the way. I hate it. It's the worst. It's, it is. Uh, it just feels so fake. I'm, gl and I'm so... glad you all are with me. I hate. Oh that. no! Yeah, everyone it's, hates it's, it because everyone hates it. Because I'll tell you why. Because uh, the Nathan for Greg, you episode, Greg's like, how dare you? <laughs> really incredible. The Nathan for you episode about yeah. him preparing and being worried about being on late night greg if you haven't watched this i know nick won't because nick Andy, doesn't watch give, anything i recommend give the full pitch of this like like spoil this episode because it is incredible okay so uh nathan is obviously this the, the show doesn't really have to do with the usual plot of the show right but this episode is nathan is going on the tonight show and he realizes I have to be a, the best guest ever i have to study all of these different celebrities uh, and I have to create a story. Every time there's a guest on one of these shows, they always have an, a hilarious story. And it always has to do with, on the way over here, I got pulled over by a cop. Or I was in the airport and this and this happened. And there's always a story like that. And he plays interviews from so many different celebrities telling these stories on late night shows. And so he pulls in, he pulls all these references or whatever. And um, it's kind of hard to explain big picture because essentially... He has to create a story, but he doesn't want to feel bad about lying about this story. So he does all of the insane shit. He that goes he out tells and does in, the stories. That's yeah, funny. He, it's a story about him getting pulled over and there's weed in his pot in his suit, but it's not his suit because he got it from another guy. He hire he does all this like extravagant bullshit, and it's so fucking like way over the top. Uh, but the thing that Drucker's talking about, you know, that doesn't really have to do with the Nathan for you episode anymore. But I'm just thinking of the guests on the you know oh so you had a you had kind of a crazy thing happen to you what happened yep. to you yeah so i'm in the airport and this and this happened and it feels so fake and it feels I so it. just i hate, I hate it, it Nick. i hate I it too it. i hate it especially because like i mean i've read so many different things about you know the era of stand-up comedy or the eras of stand-up comedy and like getting on the tonight show originally was like just the hugest thing for a comic and i've read like how hard they would prepare just for that like five to like i think it was like a five minute set and how it could like literally back in the 80s like if you had a good set on johnny carson like the next day you'd have a tv show and you could be super big and then it would be like a year before you died of an overdose or whatever yeah. but Jesus Christ. seriously i mean that's what it was because all those all these guys were like i don't know what to do with all this money cocaine yep. Yep. Um, but yeah, so when you see these celebrities come on, Wait, and they tell these, does everybody just spend it on miniatures now? <laughs> miniatures <laughs> but, I mean, I mean, honestly, yeah. If I was a TV writer in the eighties, I'd be dead. But now I have like, you know, yeah, now, now I you have got like to be... a, I have a big Pac-Man machine. So <laughs> there you know. he goes. There so it is. Kevin. Kevin loves those. But yeah, I, I just, I just so think much. that's so. It's so funny because that's the difference between sort of that medium and what we're doing right now, which is it's no, it's not a shock to anyone that podcasting has kind of picked up, especially in this era when right. people just want to hear each other talk and and figure out some ideas and challenge each other and like goof around, you know. And you can see people being real versus like 
Joe Schmo celebrity, or I'll just say Ryan Gosling because he's always on the tip of my tongue and always in my always here, always right here. You know, saying some cute story that you know he rehearsed backstage or is not even really yeah, like right. that just feels so it's, fake. But he's so beautiful, so who gives a shit? Greg, you well, that was the funniest it. thing about the the Nathan the for you thing. Yeah, the, the 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 thing that I thought you were gonna get at, Andy, is like him doing the research to craft this perfect story kind of exposed a huge scandal where so many celebrities have told the exact same story you're kidding me like that's amazing exact same story because he was trying to find all of the the highlights to create the ultimate story but he realized the ultimate story was already told many times getting stopped by a cop somewhere and the great thing about it is whoever the guest was before him i don't know if it was kristen dunst or if it was uh um it was some yeah emma stone maybe. there was some ge- there was some guests right before him greg did you say jaleel and- white <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm helping andy out i'm throwing yeah, him, i'm the- throwing life raft. so the thing yeah. is nathan he's like i gotta nail this anecdote i have to be the perfect guest and i have to have the best punchline i want everybody to laugh i'm so nervous about this and the guest that went up right before him tells a story about getting stopped by a cop and he's like <laughs> and he's like and this is where my world came crashing down and it shows him in the green room watching this <laughs> watching the clip of you know the the person live telling you know this story yeah, about yeah. how they got stopped by the cops and he's like how, you know uh, there's no way i could repeat this story twice this is they're not gonna laugh and it's just <laughs> it's fucking perfect tv it's perfect tv man tim tell him tell greg to watch it dude watch it greg come on I mean, is there so much? Jenna love do? it. So Jenna fucking do. die. Do you know what you guys should watch? Is Cop Rock? That should be Cop a kind of funny Cop Rock. I know, do you know Cop, what Cop Rock, Rock is. No. I know oh. Cop Rock only because of the docu series that was talking about the eighties, or it was, yeah, yes, or like, I, or, yeah, it was. Wait, this one is a of real biggest, show. It's a real show. It's one of television's biggest failures. Um, it was at the time it was like the joke of a failing television show. And what it is, is it is a police drama. It's a police drama musical. Oh, oh shut up. This is yeah, great. But Wikipedia is, says drama. Rock is an American police procedural musical television series. <laughs> what? And it is weird as hell. <laughs> Can we? Think if we, is, will we get claimed if we watch some of it? Yeah, think? probably. Lame. I mean, it's it's worth it. No, 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 no. We won't. We're gonna be fine. All right, here, okay, Kevin. So, I'm, so, Kevin, I'm sending this assets. We got because right doc- now I'm looking at Cop Rock. Let's be careful out there. There is the docu series. I don't know if it was A and E or not. I don't know what channel put these series out. Where it's like the eight. It's not like I love the eighties. It's not one of those shows. It's oh, right, I know you're talking about. It's more of a uh, you know a serious take on on here are the eighties here were the nineties and they're talking about history and and entertainment going through all of it. But the yeah. creator of Cop Rock also made I believe Law and Order or made one of these important NYPD Blue maybe. And so yeah, I think he made like, I think it he was made CNN. Like, yeah, yeah. So when he came out with this, they were like, "Whoa, oh, Steve, we did not, ex- Steve we did Bochco. not expect a miss like this." <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So and, Steve Bochco, that's a name I know. Let me. Yeah. What did like, there's what there's. Doing? One episode literally has a song about a man promising to kidnap a baby for somebody, but it's him like describing himself almost like in a Disney film. It'd be like, I'm the villain, but it's a man saying he's going to kidnap children. <laughs> so Steve, yeah. Steve, this has Steve Bosch go, Hill Street Miller Blues and LA. I love it already. Yeah, let's watch it, Kevin. Show All me right. some of this. Roll call, 7.52 a.m. Greg hates audio listeners. I love the audio listeners. It's a musical thing. That you're the one over there. You're like, oh man, look at this thing. Isn't this the coolest thing? I won't tell you what the thing is. Item seven. Yeah, Item Greg. Seven, November if you really loved our audio listeners, PM. you would just describe an episode of Nathan for you for 45 minutes. You got a conflict. Like guy's hair. Yeah, I do. It's resolved. You're going. <laughs> Item eight. Officer uh, Quinn returns to active duty. Cops used to have more fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they never used to take it so serious. You know what I mean, Greg? Yeah. That guy's been in everything. Wow, he's in yeah. every. He's looked. The key to not aging is always looking 50. Just be bald from the start. I think I was in Cliffhanger, for Christ's sake. Male cock, six three. Should I Looks should I fast forward or? Yeah, let's I mean, do some singing. Them. Is there some singing happening? Oh, yeah, I, I, I want to see how they. I want to see how they transition into. It. We got to be close. Yeah, here it is. Oh, here it is. Let's be careful out there. <laughs> Let's be careful out there. How could you think this was a good idea, Stephen Bochco? We had a one eighty seven at the same Oh damn. That's one eighty seven's a murder, by the way. About a seven eleven. Yeah. 
That's a, that's a murder. That's probably enough of that, right? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. I was enjoying we get it. it. We got it. I was it. waiting for the key change, Kevin. Wait for the beat to drop. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Are those easy? How many? Did, how, how long did that run for before? Those like, like we four episodes. Stop, four we gotta stop episodes. this shit. <laughs> I think you can get like a DVD set with all eight episodes, but I only think they aired like four. Oh they got, no! They got Clerks the animated series. Yeah. Who? Guess who did the the music? Tawny Katane. Randy Newman. Damn. Oh, yeah, oh my god. That sounds yeah. like it. Yes. <laughs> that sounds Dude. like it. There's Randy Newman just <laughs> thinking about what he composer. sees. God. Get ready, me. These guys are wearing uniforms. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's where you hear like little snippets of oh that's what inspired him in Toy Story. Yeah, <laughs> you can see Everything. the inspirations and where they'll go from. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't know, this is the kind of funny podcast oh, each and every week, twice a week for sometimes five best friends gather on these microphones each coming to talk about whatever it is they want to talk about you like that you go to patreon.com slash kind of funny where of course you can watch us record the show live just like dj kento is demetrius newells mike l is and the other patrons are of course on patreon.com slash kind of funny you can get each and every episode ad free you can get it with the exclusive post show you we do and you can just support us however if you have no bucks tossed our way it's no big deal youtube.com slash kind of funny roosterteeth.com and podcast services around the globe twice a week two episodes just for you housekeeping thank you to our patreon producers kieran o'donnell steve powers julian the gluten-free gamer alexander Knoxel, bill i am this episode is brought to you by the kind of funny next gen podcast in fact let me tell you about it right now tim hold your hand up the entire time i read this ad this episode of the Kind of Funny Podcast is brought to you by the Kind of Funny Next Gen Podcast. If you didn't know, over on Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny and Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny Games. At the gold tier, you can subscribe for the new monthly show, the Kind of Funny Next Gen Podcast. The KF Next Gen Podcast. It is Barrett. It is Blessing. It is Roger. Uh, it is them doing their own podcast where they hang out and do something very similar to the Kind of Funny Podcast. But of course, they're the next gen. They're the next generation of Kind of Funny. Uh, it's interesting to hear them talk about, obviously, uh, what it's like to work here in a way that I never would because I was one of the founders and I'm trapped here forever. Right, Kevin? Yep, forever. So yeah, go over to patreon.com slash kind of funny or patreon.com slash kind of funny games. You can subscribe at the gold level and you can get the KF Next Gen podcast. Of course, if you subscribe at the gold tier, guess what? On whatever one you pick, you get the other Patreon as well. So you'd have all the exclusive uh, content, all the early access, all the post shows, everything you could possibly want from kind of funny on one Patreon subscription, plus the brand new show, the KF Next Gen podcast. For now, let's get back to the old gen podcast. All right, Sam, we're back. What do you have to say? Uh, I'm just looking at the Wikipedia for Cop Rock, no, and sure. there are there are in <laughs> fact 11 episodes. There are 11 oh. episodes. Um, I do want to read you all of their titles. Oh They're not God. all winners. They're not all winners, <laughs> but I will say uh, somehow they definitely are all losers. Uh, number one, pilot. Number two, ill-gotten gains. Yeah. Number wow, three, Chris Gaines guest stars. Happy <laughs> Mutters Day. Not mothers, mutters. Mutter. Mutter. Hello, mutter. Mm -hmm. Hello, Fada. <laughs> number four. Number four. And this is where they start getting to the point where I'm like bringing these up for a reason. A three corpse meal. Oh, oh. yes. Yes. Number five. The cocaine mutiny. <laughs> this is number TV. six. Oil of Ole. Uh, number seven. Copophiliac. Cop I'm sorry. A -filiac. <laughs> that's, that's, you can't do that. That one doesn't work. <laughs> that's too far. That's where you cross the line. Pots don't fail me now. Number nine, marital blitz. I'm jumping to number 11, which is bang the pot slowly because the, <laughs> the worst one is number 10. No noose is good, good news. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. Your choices made this show. And I'm not yeah. wasn't choices. ready. <laughs> yeah, they weren't. Yeah. I wonder if we are now in a post Glee world. You yeah. Know, I should really get out there and see it. Post Glee. Huh. Have you guys watched Glee? Have you sat through an episode of Glee? Like no. recently or in I've only seen just clips. ever. Just ever. I have. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, it's, I'll, I'll it's, be, uh, Nick, I'll be honest with you. Before you, before you mention, like, uh, uh, get into this, I'm just worried to. I don't want to shit on a show and have like them be one of Mike's friends. That's what I'm worried about. So like, as soon as you started going to the shitting, on oh Lydia, no, you're okay, you're okay. I, I was kind of like friends. Yeah, no, I, just, I, just, I just have people. I uh, no. I, let me put it to you this way. 
<laughs> Mike's friends are largely all comedians, and we are all sad, broken people inside anyway. Right. So if I was if I was friends with Ryan Murphy, I would not be on this podcast. I would yeah, have a, I would have a house. Shit to do. I yeah. would have two houses. I would love. It. Yeah, he's got much better shit to do. That's it's one that's of those. How you, <laughs> I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say that's how you know I don't know how to do anything with money. He's like, I get a house. I get a house. Maybe I get another house. <laughs> another house. <laughs> I have three houses. How many can I get? We'll houses. see. <laughs> Maybe buy I some GameSpot stock. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> So Glee was one of those one of those shows where like like I like to shit on the Big Bang Theory, right? But I can watch the Big Bang Theory and go, I get why people like the show. It's funny, it's charming, it's very like hey, I get it, right? Glee's one of those shows where I watch it, and I'm like, this is really not likable for some reason. And I think like when you watch them and they were all lip singing, I was like, why aren't they actually singing? This it's a show about people who sing, and all these people can sing, but they're not actually singing in the thing. And then like the arrangements, I guess I just always wanted it to be pitch perfect with the movie the show, but it never was. It, they never caught that vibe, like Pitch Perfect they, I was able to catch. So I was just like, I don't get the glee. This is one of those, I'm like, I'm sorry, Hollywood. I have to uh, I have to protest this one. I don't understand why this one's popular. All right, counterpoint, Mike Drucker, who loves glee. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> you know, the first season was pretty good. It had some creative ideas. Maybe it had a hard landing, but that first season was charming. And it, you know, it brought back mashups and covers, which we all like. Did you yeah, that's, read, that's where I Did stand, you read man. somebody's review? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, if you do look at IGN, I used to review DVDs for IGN when I was in college. I reviewed oh, High School sick. Musical 1. Um, so oh, that's awesome. where that's coming from. Yeah. Mm, there we go. I, you know, I, I think that the mashups are they're pretty good. The musically, Glee's pretty sick. I, I, I haven't just, watched I the just, show as no. a whole, but like I've seen a lot of the the mashups and just kind of like music they make and yeah, Nick, show I, on Nick, YouTube. Nick, Nick doesn't want to like, hear it. He just hits Tim with a no, no, <laughs> no. And, and, and again, I mean, I'm sure they're fine. they're they're fine, right? We're talking shit about Glee. It's fine. But I just remember watching Pitch Perfect and going, "Hey, this we are. is so creative." And then I and then I went to. Well, I mean, Greg hasn't chimed in yet, so I assume he's on my side. Um, Tim, Nick, I'm with you. I'm I'm with you, Nick. Thank you, Andy. When but the I just whole remember watching. Going, I was like, enough of this fucking. I don't get it. I, enough of, enough it. of yeah. it. It's it's just it's too. You know what? Maybe it is Tim. It's like it's like there's kids in high school that are more popular than me, and I'm like. No, I don't like this. I don't like I mean, this. Yeah, there, there, there is something very telling about you starting this conversation, talking shit about Glee, and then just bringing up Big Bang Theory, <laughs> like as if they're similar <laughs> in any real well, way. Uh, well, big. Well, I mean, they are. Like they're su- they were super popular for their time. Obviously, Big Bang Theory, I think, was more popular and, and ended up going longer. But Glee was like a moment in TV, yeah, like in TV history. And I just remember trying to get in it because I was such a fan of like acapella singing and. And I love, I mean, I love the Pitch Perfect movies. And so I was like, oh, this is going to be like more like Pitch Perfect. And I just remember watching it being like, this is kind of really pretentious to me. And I don't like the musical. I don't like the music in it at all. I, don't, I think the arrangements are kind of like not as creative as I want them to be. Again, I'm coming from the Pitch Perfect movie universe. Right. So yeah. maybe that's where I'm coming from. But again, I don't want to, I'm not going to shit on people love. If you like Glee, like Glee. If you like Big Bang Theory, get it. I can watch both of them and see why people would like them. I just didn't vibe with Glee for sure. I, when I think of Glee, Glee I think of everybody first loving epi- Glee. First episode aired May nineteenth, two thousand nine. Pitch Perfect, twenty twelve. Huh? <laughs> Man, I was really, I was like, I think Pitch Perfect was later, but I, I'm often wrong. Yeah, I guess Nick I'm wrong about matter. that. Then Nick doesn't I mean, matter. Yeah, Pitch Perfect matter. was very much trying to ride the wave of Glee, and like was almost a Glee parody. A lot of holes in your story, Nick. <laughs> no, well, yeah. yeah. You love Glee. You love well, it's Glee. Also like, I I love Glee. It's also possible I didn't watch Glee. It's also possible I didn't watch an episode of Glee for four years. <laughs> I'm also waiting for Nick to go. I'm honestly waiting for Nick to go. Wait, which one's Glee? <laughs> <laughs> Glee's the one uh, about the cops that sing, right? That's the <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Mike, take, take me back to May 31st, 2006, high school musical. This teen sensation sweeps the DVD nation. Yeah. <laughs> this new set. You did it. You did it. Shut up. <laughs> How much did you hate reviewing DVDs? Hated it, but they sent you free DVDs, and you kind of had to take the the, the shit you didn't want to get the good ones. Like, I would get Criterions, but I had to take sure. High School Musical. Sure. Um, I was never paid, though. I don't know if that's legal, but but I was like, you know, it's that thing that we all fell for when we were like sophomores in college and we were like, exposure. I need exposure. Yep. Yeah, yep. we'll pay you an exposure. You have a How good lead, though. That? You have a pretty good lead here. Wow. 
High School Musical came out of nowhere. <laughs> if you haven't heard of it, your younger relatives probably have. A Disney oh, Channel original movie, the lighthearted musical, became an overnight sensation. The soundtrack is already a bestseller, and there are already special edition double dip sound double dip soundtracks <laughs> featuring dicks. new recordings of the song. My, then I got, and this isn't mocking you because I, no, I, you can go read no. my old IGN reviews, obviously. But like the things you had to put in here, the audio presentation. Oh. Much better is the audio presentation yep. <laughs> featuring a good Dolby Digital 5.1 surround track. While most of the movie, besides the musical numbers, is front-loaded dialogue, Disney did a good job of adding in atmospheric noise. Lockers close and open behind you while characters <laughs> are in front of you. When one character walks down the hall, the sound of shoes moves from the back to the front. You really get a pretty good sense. There was, Mike, no, there was no word minimum. I was just writing. Mike, you're just making observations. Yeah. Mike, you just <laughs> literally... And you literally opened extras, up the DVD packaging. menu and just copied verbatim what those things <laughs> described that's, it as. That's what they wanted. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, packaging that. and extras. High School Musical comes on a single disc in a latch Amray case. <laughs> 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 included in this chapter listing uh oh, included is a chapter listing and an ad for performing the high school musical at your school awesome. this sounds yeah. like you know what uh, actually this starts to make more and more sense because you're not necessarily just talking about this show because i i see a lot of reviews like this whenever a movie that i'm really looking forward to is getting a 4k release mm -hmm. and you read the reviews there from people that get it early the press that get it early and they're like you know, the colors are fantastic. The sound effects are better. You know, the Dolby Digital is adding this. And again, kids' locker sounds are behind you now. <laughs> you can hear yeah. the lockers behind you and the footsteps. <laughs> it's all accurate. So it sounds more like a a technical rev review and less of a, yeah, the show's good, kind of. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you already know at that point if you want to buy the DVD, it's good. I got to know about the extras, the Easter eggs. Yeah, that's how all those Easter reviews egg. are, though. I mean, even, remember, Greg, like you reading your PS2 game reviews? Oh, like, dude, my reviews. The same oh, yeah, totally. fucking shit. Yeah. Which, like, reviews were just different than where it was kind of an overview as well as actually describing your experience with it. But it's like, we don't need to know that the PS2 box has a little hole for your memory card that you don't have to use, but you could if you want. But, but yeah, I, there now, it is. Now though it's the, the inverse where there's like a like 100 million people watch a video of them revealing that little place you put that thing. That's true too. Yeah, it's just different content. Now it's not in the reviews. Now it's just unboxing videos. Yeah, man. Uh, I'll take you to April 17th, 2007. Greg oh, no. Miller's Valhalla Knights review. Grab your sword and staff. It's RPG time is what yeah! I came up with oh, for my, my strap line. And here's what's my an, what's an RPG you ask? <laughs> my shitty intro. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hollow Knights is a lot like your ex-girlfriend. There will be moments when you have a great time together. Oh my god. You... <laughs> How? <laughs> but you How? won't be able to shake the feeling that you could do better. Oh That's my what god. I had. What? That's what, what I'm going through. What? what happened to you? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> but I, too bad I... that fucking bitch never called me back. <laughs> like, <laughs> did you <laughs> Greg? Did you... <laughs> Can you imagine? So personal. Could you imagine if like someone was submitting a review for us right now, and you're the EIC, and you read yeah. that first line in 2021? You'd be like, hey, "Listen, <laughs> I need you to rethink basically the whole first paragraph." Uh, you email that go. kid back. You're like, "Buddy, you're gonna you gotta find a different line of work." Yeah, <laughs> this is not gonna work for you, Kevin. <laughs> Kevin, please bring up what I just sent assets because I, I want everyone to to see the game that Greg made that comment about. <laughs> hey man, I tried to keep you interested. All right, I fe I felt like there was somebody chained to a chair that had to read everything on IGN. They didn't care if this, if this game stood up for them or not. <laughs> like, oh no. Was Valhalla it Nights. No, I, Val, Valhalla Nights is one that I always go back to that I hated reviewing. Like, when people are like, oh man, like, you, you know, it's a fun job to play video games. I remember distinctly, like, this Saturday on my bed with this PSP being like, I fucking hate this game and I have to play it. <laughs> I have to play it. I have to keep playing this. And yeah, so, the yeah. Wikipedia, the reception area says the game received mixed or average reviews according to the review ag aggregation website. <laughs> Except Metacritic. for Greg Miller, who had a bad <laughs> ex-girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. Beat me to it. Beat me to it. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll I'll get, you're really reading it. I didn't, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. But does the GameSpot gave the game 5.9 and IGN a 6.5, <laughs> citing the lack of in-game story and lack of clarity in the side quest. That's what I said. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but like to your point too, of just the shit you have to shove in here, right? Yep. Through ad hoc wireless, the title hosts a two-player co-op mode where players bring three team members <laughs> from their single-player game to 30 exclusive co-op missions and a two-player versus mode where I'm like just padding this out if like I don't like this game. Here's what's in it if you want to like this game. You idiot. Right. <laughs> yeah, idiots. Now, who Tol wants to see my fried chicken ice cream? 
I was gonna say total non sequitur, but yeah, you do your non sequitur. <laughs> Yeah, you well, you can go. I can go get it. You get. You get your thing ready. Yeah, non sequitur for you, Greg. Non sequitur for me, uh, Nick. I am all jacked up right now, and I'll tell you why, big dog. I'll tell What's you. What's going why. on, buddy? What's going on, buddy? I got Ooh. the brand new oh. Coca Cola How? coffee. Shut up. Is it good? It's it's weird. It's <laughs> kind of weird. That's, that's so, a no. Um, the reviews are in. <laughs> I don't. I you know I don't hate it. I've been drinking the whole can, right? It's not like one of those. Ugh, I'm gross. I'm done with this or whatever. I'm pretty much done with the whole can. I am insanely just jacked up with energy right now. I haven't felt like this in a long time. And I got to assume because the energy drinks just have no effect on me anymore. And that's, I got to just come to grips with that. And, and, um, and that's this... just part of my life now, but this is actually not bad. I, I think what they tout is it's great Coca-Cola taste or no. What, what did the advertisement say? Maybe it was at CVS. It's like, kind of like alluding to the fact that you get that initial coca-cola taste but the aftertaste is kind of coffee-ish hmm. this is gonna sound, it's this not gonna, bad this is gonna make me sound so fucking old right now so roger get out your fucking pen and paper and start taking notes but i'm pretty sure greg you might remember this did you ever watch laverne and shirley of course. and didn't didn't she penny marshall's you. character on there used to drink like Northern. pepsi and coffee like a mixture of pepsi and coffee because I, I remember distinctly remember that. seeing that and then trying it and being like, this is fucking disgusting. This isn't bad. So it comes in three flavors. They have vanilla, caramel, and dark roast. I got the vanilla and the dark roast. I can hop into the dark roast right now. But I don't know. I, don't, you know, I, I could fucking power this computer right now if I, if I attached <laughs> it to my body somehow. I'll let you know how it goes, though, Nick. All right, cool. Yeah, so I can't wait to be able coke, to... I miss your coffee, Coke, coke coffee. Oh, yeah. N yeah, Greg. Um, brand new Coca-Cola coffee. Nice. Nice. Yeah, it's pretty good. I can't wait to be able to drink brown liquids again because I haven't had coffee in two days, and I'm a Laverne person. and Shirley's milk and Pepsi. Is that what it was? That's what it was. Milk and Christ. Pepsi. Thank you. God. That was disgusting. Fuck. That's disgusting. Oh, I mean, that kind of sounds like a root beer float sort of thing. Yeah, except for it's not ice cream; it's milk. You see the difference yeah. there? That's what it was, Kevin. Thank you for looking that up. <laughs> I tried tomato, it one time, Kevin. and I was like, no, I don't like this at all. Tomato, tomato, Kevin. Greg, what's going on with this fried chicken ice cream you got going on here? Hold on. As you went into your intro, the freezer started beeping. It's not closed. I gotta close the freezer. <laughs> oh, jeez. Look at oh, this geez. technological. Man, look at Greg's son hair. Of a bitch. You I guys know. have normal lives so like jealous. everyone else. Just normal lives. <laughs> you know, we're normal, normal. We're normal people, Joker. We are just normal human people. Greg has Joker. a nice kitchen, and Tim has a movie stu movie, you know, theater. <laughs> Nick the has seats a slide the seats light up, Joker. They're real cool. Uh, when they I've been do. in there. Yeah. They do. They have little things that tickle your butthole too when the speaker wait, wait, wait. drops. Nick has an empty room. Is that like where yeah, are we he, going with Nick? Is it a, is <laughs> like, it a dance Nick. studio? That's that 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 is something that's an observation people have said before. So, right. Drek, what happened is I, I moved mid pandemic, and okay. now getting furniture delivered is a pain in the ass. And so, I think in the next two weeks, I'll be able to to get a couch in here, but uh, we tried to get one in. It was all broken and fucked up. And so now I'm just stuck with a uh, dance room. Uh, Tim Getty's from Kind of Funny. Uh, Drucker, one of my favorite things from the Up at Noon days were when you would write a bunch of different jokes and uh, we didn't find the funniest one for uh, during the the table reads because so many of them were funny. So then Greg would do all of them. you would be like, no, 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 let me, let me do another take and you keep going. Uh, I don't want to put you too much on the spot, but if you could just start thinking in your mind for some time in this podcast, if you can come up with alternate places that uh, Nick's room reminds you of that aren't just a dance Thank studio. You. Thank you. That could be, <laughs> that could be a lot of fun. Now, to be yeah. fair, if you if you blink the your eyes real quick. back of a quick. closed down JC Penny. <laughs> yep. Uh, room uh, an improv team rents to practice. Wow. That sounds right. Mm -hmm. He's that in a moving good. truck that is going to the studio. <laughs> <laughs> To be fair, Drucker, it looks like your room minus the furniture and with a cheesy neon light. Yeah, yeah. The, the furniture and lack of neon does a lot for the room, though. It really does. It's true. It's true. You should look really, it really brings together like a, a really homey, kind of warm feeling to the room. Right, yeah, yeah. Whereas my place looks like I sold all of it for crack. That's kind right. of what I'm dealing with right now. Yeah. All right, so you ready to hear about my fried chicken ice cream now? Sure. Yeah. Let's mm -hmm. do it. So look at this now, all right? Where did you get this from? Gold Belly. Uh, Greg Rice and Jeremy Hoffman uh, were showing this the other day. Have you seen it yet? So you know, you know what I'm doing here? Because it looks like a bucket of fried chicken, doesn't it? Huh? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We can see it. We can see it. You're shoving it into and the camera. And you open up, right? And it looks like it looks like it's just chicken, right? Is it yeah. ice cream? It looks like Tim's pillow. It's actually ice cream, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what it is, the deal, right, is it's a uh, waffle crust. ice cream 
uh, chocolate cookie bone, caramelized uh, white chocolate, and cornflakes. Oh my god, that sounds it's unbelievably like, good. That sounds amazing. Get that crunch on the microphone, Greg. Let's hear that. Oh, it's it's hard having trouble focusing. It's not focusing. <laughs> well, it's just a blurry. Yeah, too much of face is still in the shot. This blurry fucking chicken. Nah, give it to Andy. It's not. Give it it's to not Andy. Doing, there it goes. There it, there it goes. There it is. Got it. Ah. It's got the ice cream in there. That looks did like you get the bone yet? Did amazing. you get the chocolate bone yet? You, you can kind of see it. It's, it's okay. Speaking, I'll give you better. I'll give you a better bite in the thing too. Oh, oh that's you a hear good. that crunch. You hear that crunch. That's a man. Fucking sell that to Pixar for a little Foley sound effect right there. That was that's worth at oh, least ten dollars. Oh, nice. that's where the crunch is coming from. I was worried because that that amount of crunch from ice cream. I was like, ooh, you're about to get that like immediate teeth to brain freeze situation mm-hmm. going. Yeah, the on. crunch mm-hmm. isn't coming. From the stick, it actually is coming from the outside because it's the cornflake mm. crunch to it or whatever. Uh, oh. Is are the cornflakes um, flavored at all, or it's just it's more there for texture? It's texture, but they taste like cornflakes. This seems like a science go far here type thing. Where like, did we need this? And then and I know "needs" a weird word, but like, who the fuck decided to do this? People who understood, everybody's trapped at home. They'll spend their money on anything. Yeah, they're mm-hmm. smart, smart people. Okay. Also, I have to imagine fans of the uh, Snickers and or Twix ice cream bars, which are fucking god tier in my opinion. Yeah, they are. The, the first time I had the Snickers, so good. The Snickers ice cream bar. The first time my mom brought those home, I was like, well, "Are you fucking trying to kill me, Elena? Are you trying to kill me?" Because I ate like three of those in a row, and nobody stopped me, Mike. They just didn't stop me. That looks so. Look at that though. Look at that bucket of ice cream chicken. That it's, looks so good. It's such a, a neat little novelty. Because I'll tell you, what, one of my favorite things is just getting a little bucket of of when K when I believe it was KFC first introduced Hell the yeah. popcorn chicken, and then you and then they look so good in the commercial, and then you realize it's a bunch of tiny pieces of just fucking batter. <laughs> like, yeah, it's just fried batter. There's yeah. no chicken in it. It's just you're 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 lucky if you get a little couple of a little couple of tendy pieces there, but it's usually just fried batter. That looks Come on, delicious, the, the batter. Yeah, but were you complaining though? No, yeah. God no. The batter's oh, the best no. part. Always. No. Every single time we go when I'm when I'm trying to be on some sort of stupid low carb diet and we go to a Buffalo Wild Wings and I get like the uh the dry rub wings like barely fried or whatever and somebody else gets the the boneless just like it's ninety percent the the breading and like one percent chicken. That's yeah. that's what I love. I, I always want those every single time I'm seeing someone eat those bad boys. I want fried chicken now. And yeah, now I, I want fried I chicken. Want <laughs> There's something I want to bring up, Drucker. Oh no, because you're wasting away. Every time I see you, you're in better shape. What yeah. are you doing exactly? What are you up to? Uh, since the since uh, the pandemic almost kind of started right after my birthday. Uh. And Do you think you brought it on? Do you think happy you're birthday? I think I brought it on. I think Did I brought you blow it on. off a candle and you're like, this is what I want. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but like, I think like I had that like in my head, that like thing when you have your birthday where you're like, what should I be doing with my life? And oh, yeah. then the mm-hmm. pandemic hit and I was like, oh, I'm going to have a lot of free time. So I've been exercising every day since the pandemic oh, began. Wow. Like every day, Christmas, New Year's. And what are you doing? that's really helped. Um, I do. I, I live right on Central Park. So I'll sometimes do like a little jog around Central Park. Gotcha. I also do, uh, I have an Oculus Quest 2 that I do nice. like boxing exercises in. We Fit. I'm mean, not We Fit. Jesus Christ. Ring Fit. Oh my Jesus God. Jesus Christ. God, I That'd would love if you still had the, the, the We fit. fit scale in the back. Oh my God. Like, yeah, <laughs> Trucker <laughs> would though, dude. I would like, no. I would believe. Oh, uh, I, I, I knew that like Joker, I, I, this is going to sound like some sort of, some sort of insult, but coming from yeah. me, you know, it just comes <laughs> from a place of love. Yeah. When when you're, you know, starting to name off the different techniques you're using for losing weight and becoming a healthier person, I'm like, there's no way this motherfucker doesn't do ring fit. There's not a goddamn yeah, 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 chance ring fit yeah. isn't a part of your life. Because I bought it, Drucker. I bought it, let's say around April or May, when they were all sold out. You couldn't fucking buy them anywhere. And of course, I bought one secondhandedly on eBay for about you know eighty percent above cost, <laughs> it was like it was a lot of money because I think they're like eighty dollars normally, and I spent about one hundred and forty dollars, yeah. and I felt really really ashamed. But I was like, you know what? I'm bettering myself. This is worth the investment, and I used it for maybe about three weeks, and then I I kind of just gave up. <laughs> and you know why? But I blame the Joy Cons. Joy Cons ran out of batteries, and uh, Tim, they're kind of tough to charge. Let's be honest. Joy Cons. Tough put them on charge? the switch right now that your switch can be plugged in with your joy cons on it's you actually right them. next to me plugged in uh okay. but the joy cons they die really really fast they die mm. really really fast and you know me i like to go long hours greg but my favorite one what's your favorite call workout you, routine they call you andy long long 
Yeah, Andy Long Long. <laughs> That's what you got. That's what you got on a Thursday, Greg. Jucker, Jucker, Long what's Long. your what's your favorite technique to do with the the ring fit? Uh, I like to they, describe it very detailed for the audio listeners. They added like a, a, a sort of a rhythm game to it in an update for free that has like eight songs, so it's not that good of a rhythm game. But like the actual exercises are pretty intense. But it's like doing it to like the Mario theme or the, the oh, Breath cool. of the Wild theme is kind of nice. Yeah. My favorite thing to do, because there's a lot of shit. I don't know, Tim, have you fucked around with the ring fit at all? No, I haven't. All right, so there's Look like, me. The, the, me and Mike, <laughs> me, and Snowbike, me. Mi, me and Snowbike Mike are on the same level when it comes to ring fit adventure in that don't, don't let me lose, right? Like, I, <laughs> I, I, I love mm-hmm. that it's gamified, but Tim, you can lose a battle and have to restart the whole thing. It's like, well, workout done. I'm fucking tired. Like, and yeah, I'm mad yeah, that yeah. I fucking yeah. lost this stupid. Yeah. Don't, let, don't let me lose. I shouldn't have hearts to lose. Just let me beat the boss and feel good and keep going or whatever. Because right. it gets frustrating in some moments. But and I see it working both ways, though. I feel like there should be a mode, like a, a no fail mode. I mean, there's definitely stuff like go that. For it. Well, yeah, no, no, no. there's good. definitely there's definitely mini games mode, or there's you know you mm-hmm. can do only these certain type of ex- you can kind of curate your own uh, um, I guess exercises or whatever. But my favorite yeah. one to do is when you put the you land you you sit on the ground, kind of like a uh, butt on the ground, Tim, with your legs mm-hmm. out. So I'll do it right here. I'll do it right here. Actually, let me get the ring fit. Let me get the ring fit. You all talk. Uh, while he Nobody does that, talk. I'm gonna tell you, of course. Hey, shout out to the kind of funny best friend who works at San Pellegrino. Who last week on last uh, episode, we we had to rank our five drinks we would have. So, Drucker, here's the thing. Yeah, someone we comes don't. in. Okay, they're sending you to Mars. All right. They say we're gonna send you up there. You can have five drinks the rest of your existence. They'll be tied to your DNA. These are these only things you can drink. What are the five drinks you put on your list? Um, regular water, just regular water by itself. Uh, Smart. ginger ale nice um i think sprite but mcdonald's okay. sprite oh yeah oh yeah fountain yeah. beverage you know I mean? fountain, like, but yeah. yeah yeah um let's see actually that's uh, not bad that's not bad right there mike just to get the fountain beverage from mcdonald's because it probably yeah, has everything you can't cheat. Right there. this isn't unlimited wishes right andy this is there's there's rules to this yeah no um, you can't you can't be doing like you know there's uh, there's all these Essentially, uh, Jocker, the story behind it, I know Greg kind of went into it while I was uh, prepping the ring fit, but essentially, uh, Kevin's a part of this in in the year 2084. Kevin and his uh, coalition of scientists are able to create drinks and, and have them be unending and infinite, but three asteroids are about to hit Earth, so they couldn't do it for every drink. So it's like, need, hey, yeah. you, sir, you only have five drinks you could pick, and that's the whole thing. And Greg so really uh, Greg tried to cheat. This. Greg I did not! Cheat at one, yeah, Greg tried to cheat at one point. It was like, oh, well, I would get bourbon and this, and then I can make an old-fashioned. It's like, no, you can't have that other thing. Fucking you get him, dude. Get, get him. Get him. I already have get... water, so I can make simple syrup. It was on my list. Watch it's me small. do my fucking ring fit, Tim. It's like, it's this one. Tim, look at Andy's thighs. There you go. It's you know, this is the thigh master. That's his favorite it exercise. So everybody, it, it's yeah. the face you're making that's landing it while you're doing. Yeah, it. definitely, definitely. <laughs> and I also love that I don't see the yeah. Joy-Con and I don't really have a sense of understanding of this ring fit adventure thing. So okay, like and attention. It, just, ring it just knows it's going. Okay, okay. You gotta love right. Nintendo. All right, so like, you, you have regular we'll water. You have ginger ale. You have fountain sprite from uh, McDonald's. McDonald's. Uh, coffee. Sure. Uh. Either and the last one would either be orange juice or vodka. I'm not a huge, huge drinker, but sure. I would I would want alcohol to still exist. So maybe yeah. vodka. I'll put down vodka. Yeah, it's good to have Mike Drucker and me are kind of on the same wavelength. Cause I was like, you know what? I'll go with like an orange pineapple juice, probably. A mixture, you know, orange pineapple. And then I would get tequila to kind of like mix a tequila with the energy drink I chose with the soda I chose. I need carbonation in my life. I can't not have carbonated drinks. So, Mike, uh, you do all this exercise. Are you still eating whatever you want? Are you, like, doing no carb? What are you doing, really? And also, because I'm forced to cook for my... I I was doing no carb before the pandemic, and it actually wasn't working super well because I just ate a lot of shit. And... (laughs) um, She's bacon. (laughs) Uh, But during the pandemic, since I had to start cooking for myself, I didn't even start cooking healthy. It's just I'm not ordering... $80 $80 worth of Chinese food. You know, sure, I'm not like sure. ordering yeah. sushi that I'm going to eat into the night. And so just by virtue of the fact that I had to cook for myself and care for myself a bit more, this is the longest I've been under 200 pounds since like my freshman year of college. Wow. Dude, that's Congratulations. Awesome. Congratulations. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, it's, I will say insane. only 80 bucks though of Chinese food. Like, man, <laughs> man, that buys a lot of good Chinese food. Because you buy a yeah. you buy you buy a fucking 10 piece of nuggets up here, a 10 piece like medium meal McDonald's. You're paying 34 dollars for a 10 piece. It's fucking. That ridiculous. is not accurate. Yeah. Don't believe what he's saying, everybody. No, I no, remember. No, no, but Uber Eats, Uber Eats is what I. Mean. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, Sorry. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, 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 so it's fifty dollars yeah. right there. Yeah. Every single I can't I can't order anything on Postmates and not have it be above twenty dollars. It doesn't matter what I order; it's always yeah. at least twenty five dollars, and I don't know why. And it's I'm just so lazy because I'm ordering from Tim places that are probably within walking distance of me. But sometimes you just get off that fifteenth podcast of the day and you go, "I got Warzone waiting for me later. I got to get this. Uh, I got to get yeah, these no. sweet potato fries delivered ASAP." <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, I get it, but at the same, like, so especially with all this GameStop situation going on, it's like if if this isn't proof of the rich get richer, like I don't know what is. But uh, another example that benefits me, where it's like it's not the rich, it's just kind of like people that like semi pay attention to things. Like if you have the right credit cards, that you just don't get charged for food delivery things, and it's like there's all these like weird little things where it's like okay, if you've hit this level of your life, you save a fuck ton of money across the board on everything. And it's like weird how it all just kind of like starts to add up. And it's just like Uber Eats, it's like totally covered. DoorDash, totally covered. And I'm just, just like because of the credit card you have? Yeah. Just because the credit, card, credit I have? card, man. Yeah. Oh, nice. You get free we'll DoorDash, do dude. Link the DoorDash. In. You get you get free deliveries. Straight dude, up. Is it paid back that. to me or do I have to like link something? Uh if you if you're using the card to buy the thing, yeah. then it's just done. It just does it for you. Yeah, is it this, is it this credit card? Andy, that's a uh, it's a Whataburger. So, it's a Whataburger gift card. It's a Whataburger upside gift down. card. Yeah. It's right. Not, right. Right. No. Real, real quick. Up, one, one thing to note: there are different charges for going in yourself and getting it delivered, or even picking up using an app. Because, like, recently we've been ordering this uh, sushi place that's really good. Uh, but I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go pick it up, and it was twenty dollars cheaper to pick it up. And then I was like, well, yeah. let me see how much it is to order. Versus how much it is to or, like call in myself and order, and it was ten dollar difference. Yeah. Then yeah. when Kevin showed up, they're like, "If you want to make it, you can just <laughs> you make we'll it, pay you. Make you. Yeah. you get it for free." That's yeah. 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 Kevin. Totally. Hey, man, yeah. it was a 20 percent difference. So it was fifty dollars hey, versus no, sixty dollars versus seventy. I'm just saying. No, honestly. Absolutely. But the other thing is, though, like with the cards, you get like there's you get percentages off that way, and then it becomes the same price or or close enough. It's not a fifty dollar nug order like uh, Andy's talking about, right? And it's just like, of course, there's a convenience fee of the fact that you're getting this no, that's right. that's house. super smart, and that's always something I've admired about you, Tim, is you love gaming that that stuff. Oh, yeah. Me and Greg, I think, are always a little bit more on the. I'm not gonna say lazy side, but I, I won't lump people into this, Greg. I'm just like, I got the card; it's linked. <laughs> I got the card; it's linked. I'm tired. I just want I feel the sweet like potato there's, fries there's immediately. The spectrum, right? Where and I'm somewhere in the middle on any given Sunday, and where I'll end yeah. up. I'm not. As, but also, you and I both met a fake because Tim just tells us what to do. Yeah, exactly. Like, we go. That's why I have Tim for. That's why every single time I want to buy anything, I go, Tim, what should I buy? And Tim goes, well, and I was like, don't falter on me, dude. This is because <laughs> I already have enough insecurity about this TV purchase as it is. What do I got to buy? And then Tim goes, give me a day. Comes back. Get the CX. Get it. Jucker, yeah. oh, for yeah. example, here's a great example to tell you how uh, n- how easily Nick is influenced. All right. Yeah. Um, Nick is restoring a bunch of old VHS tapes. And he mentions how he talks to Fran Mirabella about the about how he's restoring these old VHS tapes. And Fran says, oh, you're using S video to best quality. And Nick brushes it off as a f- typical Fran thing to say, right? Of course, because Fran, Fran, of course, has to overcomplicate everything. Yeah. Drucker, I have an old VHS that I think Capcom shipped us for a Resident Evil uh, or, yeah, or Resident Evil pack. Wow. thing. Yeah, so I was like, oh, I'll just grab this, and if it works, I'll digitize these videos, and if right. not, I'm not even going to worry about this again. But continue, Andy, I'm sorry. And then he mentions how Fran is being overly complicated, because we love when Fran is overly complicated. It's kind of a, it, it's content for us. We love making fun of Fran. We love Fran. <laughs> we love Fran, and it's so easy to make those jokes. Um, and he mentioned this to Tim, and Tim goes, it is better video quality. Like, he is right. <laughs> and then Nick, I see it in his eye, he goes, son of a bitch. And then you know the next fucking day he has to spend Bro, like what you did can, you spend on this? You page? can watch. By the way, it just came in today. You can watch that episode. I stop talking and start going on eBay to find an S video out VHS player for a hundred dollars <laughs> after shipping all this stuff. I think it was like one hundred and forty dollars. Now, to be fair though, and I, I bought it, I believe out of my own money. I, I think 
Um, <laughs> Greg also wants to use this for his that. old his old wrestling think. videos, which I think is great. So also, if Andy, we can figure out how to make that and put those online, it could be a company expense, and I'll reimburse myself. What's up? Uh, there, there was a little bit more like of us breaking him down. There was we had done a show earlier that he was on. Where, uh, like, okay. me and one other person, like, he told that story, and we were like, well, that, I mean, that's, I'm pretty sure that is how you record the best quality. Got it, got it. And got he was it, like, uh. Yeah. And I'm like, you should probably think about that. And he's like, I don't know. And I was like, get one of the top loading VHS. I wanted one of those. Yeah. Like, those are always my uh, favorite yeah. ones. Those are the cool ones. Jucker, yeah. do you ever see yourself leaving New York? I mean, I, I lived in L.A. for a little bit. Um, you know, before I got this job, I was I was in L.A. for a little bit. Uh, yeah, I could leave New York again. I like New York a lot, though. I like living in New York, but I'm, I will go wherever there is work, man. I like to work. Go ahead, Greg Miller. Kind of fun. Thank you very much. Uh, you mentioned earlier, you you know, you go and you walk around Central Park. Do you, can you see uh, Dana Barrett's apartment from Ghostbusters really easily? That's so cool. That's a cool question. I think that building's not a real building. Uh, actually, what it's a real building, Drucker. They put a matte painting on top, so it doesn't have like the gargoyles and shit. But like, it's there, hey, all right. You're then, then I didn't recognize it without its face on it. <laughs> Drucker, we're gonna need you to go out right now and take a picture of that building. And come right back, <laughs> Tim. Tell yeah. him to, how to get that thing where he can switch the disc. He can go walk around oh, and yeah. film it and broadcast yeah. it back here. <laughs> Drucker, would you would you consider yourself one of these New Yorkers that like, if I hey. were to go, if I were to go and do the the Michael Scott thing of, you know, got to eat, by, you know, New York's finest and I'm going at a Sabaro. Would you judge me? No, because I've been to Sabaro so many times. I've like been yeah. drunk in Hell yeah, time, yeah. like a lot of comedy clubs when I used to do a lot of stand up are close to Times Square, or close to uh, like Sabaro's and it's 2 a.m. and you're drunk. You get Sabaro's. Yeah. I'm fine with that. Right. No, Mike, you talk Go about ahead. 2 a.m. You talk about comedy clubs. How has this year of covid affected both i guess new york and comedy and i guess and a third one too like you know making the show for samantha b yeah um well I'm, you know i'm sort of like you guys where i'm lucky enough that making a talk show you can make remotely so we only had one week interruption in, in our entire cycle last year wow. Wow. so um it's harder on other shows you know i have a i have friends who write on sitcoms that like you know they're they'll work for 10 weeks in the room writing it still during pandemic but then they're waiting months and months to see if and when they come back at all to tape it or if they're not going to come to tape it and that affects people's pay you know what i mean like when you have yeah. to break up the room that far apart mm -hmm. so it's been hard and a lot of clubs are suffering and it's sort of this catch-22 because a lot of clubs are suffering but then some douchier clubs are doing shows, but they keep having giant COVID outbreaks at them. Yeah. So it's kind Which, of. Didn't Dave Chappelle know. just get COVID for what, through one of the shows that he was doing? Maybe not through one of the shows, but he, he got did, COVID yeah. thoroughly. In, yeah. in Texas, yeah. In Texas. Because Texas laws are so lax on all this dumb shit. And he, every, all the comedians are like, let's go do shows in Texas. Because like, <laughs> it's the Wild West out there. Yeah. 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 It's That's been a, hard so much. My question would be before that, though, like before pandemic times, are you still hitting the clubs? Are you still going in, in, in that scene? I was. I was. I was like planning on touring a bit more last year. And then really? the pandemic didn't happen. And I got to be like, all right, well, I'm fine. <laughs> Don't even <laughs> <Yeah>. worry. <laughs> that, that's been the weirdest thing for me is like comedy, obviously. Um, it just takes so much energy yeah. out of your out of your day, at a time out of your day. And part of the fact that I haven't been able to do it, because, you know, the people are still doing Zoom shows and stuff. I'm not sure if you've done any of those. but I've done, yeah. They're just heartbreakingly bad. Um, they're, so, they're so bad. They're so bad. <laughs> they're so bad. Uh, it's been so interesting, like, seeing how I've reacted, like, feel, feeling the reaction of, like, of the f first and foremost, just utter relief that I don't have yeah. to go. I don't have to do be, do be on stage. I don't have to risk that that pain that is inevitably going to come um, right. with either rejection and or, you know, I do a little bit of success and I want more of it. But then also, you know, you just miss it. I, yeah. I actually, I actually, things started to open back up and I got invited to a show tomorrow night on top of a parking lot where literally people don't even get out of their cars. They space the cars out. And they have a device where they can just hear you <laughs> Mike in their shaking car. his head as violently no nope. as possible. And nope. I, I, be honest with you, I'm, I nope. think I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to drive down to Santa Cruz and park on the parking structure, wear a mask, and just stay 20 feet away from people just to kind of have that that, that experience again. And, and I know it's going to be fucking terrible. <laughs> yep. It's going to be terrible. I can't it's gonna wait be terrible. to hear about this. Oh, brutal. my Lord. It's oh, it's going to be brutal. Because you can't, I mean, there's nothing, apparently they're supposed to honk if they think it's funny. <laughs> No, yes. no, no, yep, that's what they do. They yep. honk, they honk. They honk. Yep. 
I watched the Joe Biden <laughs> conferences he did with <laughs> with the people I honk when they agree with yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. Boom. What I'm a great stand up set that was. <laughs> 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 oh, God. Do you think we ever get back to, you know, the cellar or, or you know, or yeah. catch a rising star? Do you think we ever get back to those tiny little intimate everyone's crammed in clubs? I think so, because I think in, you know, whether it's a year or at the end of this year when people, we have enough vaccinated herd immunity, I feel like there's mm-hmm. going to be a lot of rubber banding back to people wanting to do those things. Like, I feel like there's going to be a, sure. a period of movie theaters having a giant boom, of restaurants having a giant boom, after which it'll probably subside back to normal. But yeah. I see a lot of that shit really doing well the moment people feel safe, and they actually are. Oh, my God. Outback Stayhouse is going to be fucking nuts, dude. Oh, my yeah. God. I can't wait. We're I definitely going to go. You. I can't wait to get to the Outback Steakhouse when we all finally take blessing like we were supposed mm-hmm. to do in week two of employment. And it's there's fucking there's uh, bodyguards and it's just lines out the back of the door. It's like, dude, this is a crazy. Yeah. Uh, can I get in? Do you know anybody? Yeah, yeah, I know. I know Steve. He's out back. He's in. He's out back. He's, he's out, out back. back. <laughs> <laughs> here's, here's, how that's, here's how that's really going to go. Uh, we're all going to go there. We're going to be the only people at the restaurant, and it's going to be <laughs> one human being working there. And that person's going to be so overworked because nobody decided to staff up. <laughs> that's cool. Greg's mac and cheese yep. will still be frozen. Still oh, yeah. <laughs> and dude, I, that Outback is, is one of the last holdouts that I'm like, I can't believe it's still there. In fact, I don't even know it is still there. Like, I, we have to look it up now. <laughs> the but if it, if it survives by by the time this is all over, I'm going to be shocked. Well, it's crazy, we, right? Because we, we just relive. We just go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Kevin. I was going to say, can we make a promise we're going to go there every week? No, every no. week. Remember, we're gonna go there once we're gonna realize how borderline bad Outback Steakhouse is, and we're never gonna go back for another year. It's gonna be great. There's a. It's still open, guys. We're good. I'm glad. Yeah, closes the dining at 9 room is closed. I miss it. Yeah, yeah. we Great can order idea. now. Thank you. <laughs> is the Buffalo Wild Wings still open? And can we go wait there for 17 hours and never get service? <laughs> that that place is still open. And Great. surprisingly, the delivery not that bad. Really? Yeah. I don't I've been. It. I've not, been. I don't believe for a second. I've been. I mean, hey, it's delivery. It's like so, uh, delivery. Everything is a step. Nothing is better delivered. Period. No, but so. I will say that delivered wings are absolutely worse than everything else that can be delivered. Well, because you like the Kalaw wings. They came crispy. That's, that's the only place. I'm, I'm not, don't get me wrong. I'm with you as a wing eater. I'm with you, Andy. I agree with you on this. I'm just saying, put it up. I ordered, a, I ordered a pizza from Pachi's down in Yo, uh, fuck that. I hate that fucking place. <laughs> <laughs> that fucking cardboard pizza. I know, yeah. I know it was free. I know it was free. <laughs> no, it was well, fair. But um, I ordered, I was like, oh, I kind of want, I kind of want pizza. And the only place that was, I could think of really was like Pachi's, even though it's so stupid because I live there. It's like 15 pizza places. But I'm like, I'm going to go there. And my wife wanted the wings from there. And, and I'm like, I'm going to pick it up because I feel like having a pizza delivered from Pachi's right now right. is a terrible idea. <laughs> and I went down there and it was, it was chaos. And I saw guys go to get the order that they were supposed to be delivering with like through DoorDash or Postmates or whatever as, you know, as, as the actual, you know, the delivery guys. Yeah. And they were just being turned away because it was one guy working in the Pachis and one yeah. cook and there were tickets everywhere. And I'm like, this was just a terrible idea. And it ended up taking me like 35 more, just 35 minutes of waiting there because they had Jeez. forgotten to make half my order. And I'm like, why do I even, I just don't even want to see any of this. I just want the thing to show up in my house or not show up in my house. That's fine. Well, That's I, but right. think about it on the other side, your driver shows up and they've forgotten half of it. So then he's waiting and then you get pissed at the driver and you fucking two star oh, him yeah. when he shows yeah. up with his shit. I mean, there's been multiple times where I've ordered stuff through Postmates. And again, I'm not, not a horrible problem to have, but that just never came. One of them got picked up, never came. And I was like, uh, I, I'm tracking the guy. And all of a sudden I see his car go from like the four blocks away then it starts going south. Then it crosses into Soma. Then it starts going. To, I'm like, I think he's, I think he's, he's running, absconding with my food. <laughs> yep. yeah. he ain't this man back. stealing my sweet potato fries. <laughs> he's like, it it's not worth it. No, you can't get mad. I mean, like that's the thing too. Is like everything's extenuating circumstances right now. You yeah. got to just have extra patience with everything and just be like, whatever. You know, we got our health. We're we're all gainfully employed. That's that's all that counts. That's all that yeah. matters. Trucker, yes, sir. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. We got a post show. I, I forget. Did I give you? A, do you have a hard out? Do you want to do the post show with us? You got time for that? I can do a post show with you. Sure. Beautiful. Before we switch over to that, though, where can people get your book? Uh, people can get my book, uh, Silent Hill 2. 
You can get it uh, digitally on Amazon if you want it on Kindle. You can also get it digitally and physically from bossfightbooks.com, which is the publisher. And buying from the publisher helps them a lot more. So please do that. It's $4.95. Uh, come on, everybody. Come on. Come on, book. guys. Come on. I just, come on. I'm getting one right now. Nice. Yeah, they, they're, they're so cool looking, by the way. I want to they're give a shout cool out to looking. the design oh, they have a great of all style. of these. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. very nice. Yeah, It makes you want to collect every single one of them. Yeah. Outside of the book, where can people keep up with you, Mike? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Mike Drucker, M-I-K-E-D-R-U-C-K-E-R. -E -E on Instagram at Mike Drucker is dead, which is mostly photos of Christmas trees and it's videos. my favorite time of year. I love it. Dude, I love it. Nothing more. I, I went when you're in that ramp up in that final Christmas week. I'm like, oh, it's going to start soon. It's going to happen. Dead discarded trees. It. Dead trees. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Kind of Funny Podcast. Remember, twice a week, four, sometimes five, best friends gather on these microphones, coming to bullshit with each other and you. If you like that, head over to patreon.com slash kindoffunny, where we're about to do the post show. You can write in with your questions, of course. You can get the show ad free, and you can just support us. If you have no bucks tossed away, it's no big deal. YouTube.com slash kindoffunny, uh, roostreet.com, and podcast services around the globe. I am jacked up on fried chicken ice cream. <laughs> Let's do a post show. I can feel it. You know what I mean? The energy. It's not Busan energy, Andy. I'm but it's feeling close. this. I'm feeling coffee, dude. I'm so jealous. <laughs> 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 <laughs>